All right, the reason why I wanted to offer this special program, um, special, I call it special, it's not special, it's a sales 101 course, is because uh, we had a lot of new members coming in the last couple of weeks, and I wanted to just make sure as we go into the end of the year and the beginning of a year that we just pause long enough, back up, and just to, just to check what we're doing, just to back up a minute and rethink what's going on here. And I thought if I... Uh, 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 produced or, or, or um, facilitated a selling process 101, I think it would do us all some good, me included. And as somebody uh, in our club mentioned, it's not just for new people, it's for seasoned people because we all need reminders. So, so with that, I'm going to go through a little slide deck here. It's going to be recorded. You'll be able to pick it up later on the recording. But I want to just uh, put a slide on the board here just to bang home a point. And that is, everybody knows what that is. It's, it's a dark silhouette in a sky background, and everybody knows what that is. And the reason you know what that is is because it's called effective branding, effective branding. There's no words, but everybody knows what, what company belongs to that sign. We have to brand ourselves. We have to uh, make every attempt to differentiate ourselves from the competition. And we do that in all different kinds of ways. It is that what makes us different? Now, everyone knows this is McDonald's, of course. What makes you different? And I want you to go into the new year thinking on ways that you can uh, stand out from the crowd. Now, Seth Godin, a marketing uh, uh, specialist, he wrote a book called The Purple Cow. And I strongly recommend you uh, you pick that up if you can at the Barnes & Noble. It's an easy read. He writes very, very uh, clearly. He also has a blog, Seth Godin, his name, G-O-D-I-N. I suggest you check that out. It's, it's free. The blog is free. Um, the Purple Cow might cost you a few bucks. But the, the, the point is, is that everybody knows what a cow is, and nobody is going to drive down the highway and stop their car and say, hey, look at the cow. Let's stop and look at the cows because everyone knows what they are and it's no big deal. But if you saw a purple cow, you certainly would pull over to the side of the road and stop and be inquisitive. So the whole concept is, is what's your purple? What, what makes you different? What, what makes you uh, put your little insignia out and everyone stops and says, hey, I know exactly who that is. And it's, it's something to think about. Now, it's not easy. And the reason why you know McDonald's is because you've seen it 400 bazillion million times. That's imbued in your head. Now, you're not going to be seen 400 bazillion times, but it's still a good idea to start thinking about what's going to position me? What's different? Is it the color? Is it the, is it the insignia? Is it my motto? Is it the clothes I wear? Is it the hat I wear? Uh, think of the ladies uh, who wear those red hats. Everyone sees red hats. They know exactly what those people are up to. It's the Red Hat Club, I guess it's called that. But in any event, years ago, it was the orange roof. For you people who are as old as I am, you know exactly what the orange roof meant. And the orange roof meant consistency. It's Howard Johnson's. You knew what you were getting. You were comfortable. You were familiar with it. And that's what branding is, is all about. So I just wanted to share that. And then you want to stop and get people's attention. This is a real live store. This was down, you get off a ship on one of the Caribbean islands and you see 57,000 jewelry stores. They're all the same. They all sell the same stuff. They sell, or, or sunglasses. You get sunglasses or you get jewelry stores and they're all the same. And yet I spotted this one. I said, how cool is that? There's 50,000 of these shops and yet this is the one that got my attention. Well, there's 50,000 travel professionals out there. What are you going to do to get people's attention? Let me go through the slides and review and before we go through the process. Now, when people meet you for the first time, when you're out in sales and you're representing your company, you're representing yourself, you're representing your family, whatever it is, when you meet people for the first time, I want you to think that these three questions are going through their mind. When they meet you, they are thinking this. Can I trust this person? Do they know what they're talking about? And do they care about me? Now, the, I, I put a great deal of, of um, weight on attitude when it comes to selling. And the reason being is because
because I don't think you can sell anything anymore to anybody. I think people are too smart for that. There's too many options. They know how things work. You can't manipulate people, nor should you want to manipulate them. You shouldn't try to manipulate them. But people are going to want to buy things for their own reasons, and you are going to help them buy things. So you're not into the selling game as much as you're into the helping game. And they're going to ask you, can I trust you? Do you know what you're talking about, and do you care about me? Now, I'm going to give you three quick little things to, to work on. You can't Trust takes time. You just can't ask for trust and get it. it you, you can screw trust up in a second, but you can't earn it in a second. Well, shifty eyes is an indication that you're not confident in yourself, and if you're not confident in yourself, I'm not going to trust you. So therefore, all you can do is all you can do. So I want you to focus on looking people in the eye. You think you do, you don't. You think you're good at it, you aren't. Pay attention to how people look you in the eye, and you're going to start recognizing the fact that they don't look at you. And then you're going to say, hey, wait a minute. I'm, not, I'm looking at the ground. I'm looking at the shoulder. I'm looking at the clouds. I'm not looking at the person I'm talking to. Well, I want you to start focusing on that. Start looking people in the eye, and it will come as a little bit of a, of a challenge to you in the beginning, but it's a sign of trust. So that's number one. Number two, a lot of people, because of the Internet, are smarter than you are when it comes to the subject matter that they're probing, as it should be. You can't know everything about everything, but they can, they can study their interest. So chances are they already know more about the topic than you do because they've researched it if they're serious. Do you know what you're talking about? Don't guess. If you don't know what you're talking about, if you don't know the answer, don't guess. Because if you guess wrong once, you're shot in, my, in, in the credibility game. So if you don't know an answer, own up to it and say, I, 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 perhaps I should. I don't know the answer. I'm going to go find that out and get right back to you. So number two, don't guess. Number three, do you care about me? The way you indicate care to somebody is that you ask them questions. You get them talking. The faster you get the other person making noises out of their mouth, talking, the more they're going to like you. The more you talk, the less they're going to like you. So if you care about me, get me talking, and then I will feel comfortable around you. Trust, know, and care, very important. When you come into somebody's contact, there's three things that can happen as a result of that. When you come into someone's world, when you, can, when you come into their environment, you can make them feel better having known you, you can make them feel worse having known you, or you can make them feel neutral. Now, there's all, those are the only three things when you come into contact with somebody, especially for the first time. Well, your strategy obviously should be to make people feel better that you just came into their life. And you do that by making them feel comfortable, making them feel important, making them feel welcome, making them feel appreciated, and being interested in them. Now, there's an old saying, if you want to become more interesting, become more interested. Now, I hope you hear that. If you want to be interesting, boy, what a, that guy was so interesting. How, why? Because he was interested in me. So if you want to become more interesting, become more interested. Interested. Okay, selling. We make this thing harder than it is. I want to just give you the process here, and, and then we'll, we'll, we'll kick it around a little bit. And then we'll go into some selling mistakes. All selling is is finding somebody who wants something and you helping them get it. That, that's all it is, is helping them want the, finding the people who want something and then you helping them get it. That, that's what it is. And most of you, I'm going to say that when I, I don't even know the answer to that, but I, I'm going to say it. Most of you don't have a written target. I, you don't know where you're going. You, you don't know the, the direction you're moving in. You, you just, every single day you wake up and then you just kind of go with the flow. And that, that is, you know, you can do that. That, that. Wayne Dyer used to do, he used to say that. He said, I take a walk. Where are you going? I don't know. I'm just walking. Well, how do you know when you get there? I don't know. I'm not going to get there. I'm just going to walk. Well, how do you know when you're time to come home? When I get tired, I'll turn around and come home. I mean, he was just a, a live life the way it unfolds. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
However, if you want to build your sales, there's a better way rather than just wait for something to fall into your lap, and that is to go make it happen, to go get it, to go do whatever needs do doing to accomplish your objective. And if your objective is to grow your business, then let's, let's do that. Well, you have to tell me who you want to do business with. Not, not that you want new business. Who? Tell me who. What company? What organization? What group? What person? You tell me who you want to do business with, then we can go make that happen. But if you just go say, I want to go build my business, I don't know what that means. I don't know what direction. Should we go left? Should we go right? To what? what should we do? I don't know. But if you say to me, you see that guy over there standing next to the pole, Mike? I want you to go meet him. Well, now I know exactly what to do. I walk over to the guy and I introduce myself. That's how you do it. So, so it's very, very important, very important, and especially you new to the business, new to sales. You need to build your target list and call it a database. Call it whatever you want to call it. Call it a hit list, a database. I don't care what you call it, but, but I want a definitive list of people that you want to do business with. And I don't want it in your head. I want it written down. And, and preferably make three copies of it, one in your car, one in your bathroom, and, and, and one in your office. So, so I know who I want to go after. I know how I'm going to build my business by going after these people. Once you, once you decide the target, once you decide your target, now you say to yourself, okay, I know who I want to do business with. How am I going to go meet them? How am I going to go develop a relationship? What do I have to do and what can I use to go make that happen, to make it a reality? So after your target, now you start selecting, let's call them weapons, marketing weapons. So I know who, where I'm shooting, there's the target. Now I have to decide what kind of arrows, if you will, on this picture in front of us, what kind of arrows I'm going to toss at that person to see if I can make some headway, to see if I can score what arrows, what weapons. So target one, weapon second. And the third piece of the puzzle is to just go do it and, and, and not think about it and not talk about it and not plan about it and not get scared about it, is to go do it, go into action. The people who are successful today are the people who do stuff. That, 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 that's how it works. Now, can you do the wrong thing? Of course you can do the wrong thing. You will do the wrong thing. But I would rather see you do the wrong thing and learn from it than not do anything and, and, and get it right. So action is the third part. Pick a target, document it, select your weapons, and then go do something. And, and that's, that's the selling process. And, and where you go wrong is that you don't, you fail in one of those three areas. You don't know who you're looking at. You don't know what you're going to do when you find them. And then you think about it too long and you don't do anything. The process, pick a target, which is your market or your audience, select your weapons, and then take action. That's the process. Now, the next slide, I think, is going to be that of a sailboat. No, no, okay, the secret is your database. That's okay, that's the next one. Oh, here's another slide, okay. La Macina Vadova Vano Gliocci. That's the next slide. Okay, how cool is that? That's the Italian. And there's a bunch of cars going down a wet road there, if you're with me. It's La Macina Vadova Vano Gliocci. I don't know if that pronunciation's right, but that's what it says. But what that says, what that implies, I got that from a book, a book I read. The car goes where your eyes go. The, the book was called Learning to Drive in the Rain. And it was about a, about a sports car and a dog and things like that. But but the car goes where your eyes go. And I want you to think about that. You will go where your eyes go. If your eyes are down, you'll go down. If your eyes are up towards the horizon, that's where you're looking. It's a very important message. And that's in sales it's important because we get dejected, we get rejected, we get frustrated, we get stressed. All of that comes with the humanity and the frailty of the business. But when you start feeling bad, when you start feeling funky, you're going down. And nobody wants to be around you. We, I, we have enough problems. I don't want to be around a person who's, who's looking down. 
I want a person who's looking at the, the optimistic side. And yeah, we can make this happen. It's not always going to happen, but we can make it happen. Your eyes go, the car goes where your eyes go, your body goes where your eyes go. And I'm a sailor, and it's called chasing the nose. And I'm an also, I, I fl used, used to fly airplanes, and that's the same phenomenon. It's called chasing the nose. And what happens is that if you look at the nose of a sailboat, just where that, that, that uh, uh, um, the sail comes down to the front of that little sailboat there, if you steer to there, you're going to steer along a line that's crooked. You go, you're going to be back and forth. It's going to the left, I better steer to the right. Going to the right, better steer to the left. When you drove a car, you used to do that. You used to just chase the nose of the car. It goes left, you turn right. It goes right, you turn left. And you have a very uh, crooked ride. Airplanes, too. You know, you go left, you go right. You go left, and then you go, you go zigzagging through the air, give, making yourself sick. Whereas the reality of it is look at the horizon, pick a spot at the horizon, and go there. Don't chase the nose. Chase the horizon. And, and, and go pick a buoy out, you know, a mile out. Go to that buoy. Just sail to that buoy. And then you'll stop zigging and zagging. So the same thing, your eyes, your body will go where your eyes go. So pick, here's the point. I guess I'm getting to a point here. Pick a goal. Pick an objective. Pick a target. Not, not, uh, not in front of you, way out there. In the year 2013, I'm going to double my business. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double my business in 2013. And you keep your eye on that buoy. You keep your eye on that horizon. And you say, I'm going to get there. And you're not zigging and zagging because you have the targets, you have the tools, and you're going to make it happen. So I thought that was an apropos. I'm, I'm living my past there. So let's... Again, I'm going to say how simple this is. Pick a target, go meet them. Now, I'm going to simplify your business here in a second. There are only two kinds of people you're going to meet. There's 7 billion people in the world today. There's 7 billion. You can look that up close enough, plus or minus a couple. 7 billion people, and I can divide them into two groups. The two groups are people I can help and people I can't help. That's it. And don't complicate this thing. People I can help and people I can't help. I'm going to go out and target people, and I'm going to find out if I can help them or not help them. And there's just two kinds. And when I find somebody I can't help, I'm going to go find someone else that I can help. That's, that's the game of selling. There's no rejection. There's no, nothing about rejection and stress. It's just finding people you can help. And, and I'm going to use a crazy analogy here that everyone on the phone will understand. And that is, in the old days, and even today, remember uh, when, around Easter time when we play uh, find the Easter egg, you know, we, we hide Easter eggs and we go find them. And the kids come running down on Easter Sunday and they're looking for those eggs. Why? Because they know they're there. And, the, and you pick up a pillow on the couch and it's not there. No egg. It's not there. Well, the kids don't quit. Why? Because they know they're there. So they go over to another pillow and pick it up, and it's not there. But they don't quit because they know they're there. So they go behind the tree, and bingo, there's an egg. They found one, and they celebrate. They go find another one. They're running all over the lawn. Why? Because they know they're there. Well, you're, you're in the same game, folks. You're, you're playing find the Easter egg, except they're not Easter eggs. They're pieces of business. And I'm telling you, they're there. You just have to go find them. And when you turn over a rock and it's not there, go look someplace else. There's all kinds of ways you can find new business today. I mean, it just, it's just mind-boggling. It's out there. You just have to find it. So think of it as a game like that, and don't get you know, upset when you don't find something, because uh, I'm telling you, it's there. Okay, uh, 10 mistakes to avoid. Trying to upsell it. Let's, one of the reasons you're not as successful in sales as you might be is number one, because you don't realize that there's two kinds of people, people you can help, people you can't help. There's, there's, you don't understand that if I meet somebody, I can make them feel better, worse, or neutral. And my job is I'm going to make them feel better having met me. I'm, that's my strategy. I'm going to make them feel happy that I'm a good guy. Um, and I'm going to get rid of all this ridiculous baloney that you've learned on sales in the past. I mean, the biggest slur I've ever received, I'm, I've been in the game 40 years now, and people would say, oh, Mike, you ought to be in sales. You have the gift of gab. I mean, that's nuts. 
the gift of gab. What what does that mean? It means you're 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 you're, you're a, you can talk, so you be in sales. That's not it at all. That's a slur. It's, I'm not trying to uh, close you. You don't get to learn how to close. I'm not going to learn how to overcome objections. I'm not going to learn how to upsell you. I mean that's crazy. That's manipulative. So so don't try to upsell people. Try try to sell them the right thing. Now if the right thing costs more, so be it. That's okay. But the right thing might cost less. If you go to Macy's and you want to buy a, a, a kitchen set and you're ready to buy it and you go to your wallet to buy it and the guy says, you know, when do you need this? And the guy says, well, I don't need it till next Friday because people are coming over to the house. Well, if you can wait till tomorrow, it's going on sale. It can save you 200 bucks if you can just wait till tomorrow. Now, did that, was that a good salesman or was he, was he a slug? I mean, he could have sold it for it made $200 more for Macy's today because I didn't know about a sale. But he said, no, 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 wait, hold on a second. Wait till tomorrow. You save 200 bucks. Well, I think everybody on the phone realizes he's a good guy. Why? Because I'm going to go back to Macy's for the next 50 years with that story. Versus if I got caught, if he got caught selling me something that went on sale the next day, I'd be furious. So my point is it's not always selling up. Sometimes it's selling down. So the key is selling right. If it's right, you do it. Up, down, over, or out, I don't care. Another uh, selling error is not being obsessed with helping people. Don't, sell, don't learn how to sell. Don't, don't sell. You can't sell. What are, you, what are you up to? What's your idea? Let me see if I can help you. I know somebody. Let's make a call. Let me help you. Make better travel-related decisions. I could save you time. I could save you money. I could save you stress. I can save you frustration. I can save you a lot. I can make your life better because I study these things. I have the contacts. I know what I'm talking about. So, so get really, really get get out of this selling mode and say I'm going to help people. I mean, when you spend thousands of dollars leaving home, a lot can go wrong. And your job is to help them. I remember speaking to a uh, uh, an organization once. It was the the chimney sweep organization, a chimney sweep association of all things. You know, these are guys who clean chimneys and clean uh, flues, you know, dryer flues and stuff like that. Because if you don't, a, a fire could start in your house. And I said to these guys, I said, how many fires are there that start in a dryer vent? And they said, you know, there's a statistic that's overwhelming. It's, let's, I'm going to make it up now, but let's say they said 20,000. I don't know. 20,000 fires are started because people don't know enough to clean their dryer vent or their flue in their chimney. It was the last time you cleaned your flue in your chimney, that 28 years ago. Well, you're looking for trouble. So I told these guys, I said, Look, you're not in the business of, of cleaning out chimneys and cleaning out vents. You're in the business of making sure people don't burn their house down. That's your business. And if I was a chimney sweep in your town, I would say, no, but I, hey, I'm not allowing it. You're not, a house is not going to catch fire in my town. I'm the chimney sweep. No fires in this town as long as I'm alive. And that's the mission because I'm obsessed with helping you keep your house. Now, if I say you need a new gizmo and you say, well, I don't want one, then I say, well, then I'll buy it for you because your house is not going to burn down in my town. And when you can afford it, you can give me the $8 for the new gizmo or whatever it is. So, so how does that relate to you? You're, there's not going to be a bad vacation in your town. You're not going to allow it. If you're going to go on vacation, it's going to be a beauty, and I'm going to make it my business to make sure it is a beauty. So, so I mean, that, that's the obsession. That's kind of the you know, over the top, helping people make better decisions. That's what we want to do. And then because sometimes we're nervous or sometimes we're not confident or sometimes whatever the reason is, we talk too much. Now, unfortunately, I, I have, I, I'm smiling right now because I'm the guy doing all the talking here and I'm saying I talk, well, I talk too much too, but in this particular environment, that's the way it goes because if I didn't talk, we'd get this. And I don't think you go 60 minutes doing that, so I better keep talking. 
So in any event, not listening to the people, really listening, not just hearing what they're saying. Listen, really get into that. What are you saying? You know, what's, what's the real meaning? Now, here's a little sales 202 trick here. If you ask somebody what's important to them, okay, they weren't ready for the question, so they'll give you an answer because that's what you do. You, you're asked a question and you give an answer. That's what you do. So you ask them what's important to you on your next vacation. They will tell you something, but I don't want you to think that that's the real answer. That's the answer. That's the knee-jerk reaction. That was the easy answer. That's the first thing that came to their head. May not be the real answer. So now you say, well, in addition to that, for example, you know what's important to you on vacation? Well. I want the, the best, uh, I want the lowest cost vacation. You know, I, I, I want to save money. Okay, good idea. In addition to saving money, what else is really important to you on your vacation? Well, that the kids get boom, 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 whatever it is. If you probe, it's usually the second or third answer that's really the real answer. So just that's kind of a sales 202 tip. So when you ask somebody a question and they give you an answer, don't necessarily buy that as the real one. Dig a little bit. Say, in addition to that, that's a good answer. In addition to that, what else bothers you? And then you'll get another answer because their mind now has had time to click into that particular category, if you will, and now their mind is thinking about the, a better answer and they'll give it to you on the second or third go around. So listening, really, really important. Stop talking as quickly as possible. Ask questions and then keep turning those questions around until you really get a pretty good feeling for what's going on. Not empathizing with the prospect is a, is a sales error. And, and what that means is that, you know, money is hard to come by. Time is hard to come by. I mean, people just, they, well, they'd love to go on vacation. They'd love to, to go on a region cruise and spend all kinds of money, but they don't have it. And it's easy for us to say, oh, you should. But really get into people's, you know, empathize with them. It's a tough, tough world out there. And if you really understand their situation and work with them, they'll appreciate that. They'll see that. They'll, they'll recognize your true concern and that just, you're just not hawking your wares. Here, here's one that I've seen over the years, and that is it's a, it's a us against them mentality. I've seen it with preferred suppliers and travel agents. It's an us against, you know, I'm your preferred supplier, and then you badmouth them. I mean, I, I've, I've seen people badmouth their customers. I mean, you, you've seen it. You're pro you probably have some that you've said less than nice things about. Now, I want you to think about that. These are the, your customers. And prospects, these are the people who are going to buy your Christmas dinner. The, the, the money coming from your customers and prospects are going to feed your family. Okay, that's where the money comes from. How can you possibly badmouth that source of income? I mean, that's crazy. That, that's how you eat, and yet you badmouth it. And, and, and you see it all the time. It's us against them. Even in, in big companies, it's manufacturing against sales. You can't live without each other, and yet there's, nobody says anything nice about each other. Well, here's a test for you. I want you to list all your customers. Put them on a piece of paper. And then I want you to say, one at a time, how do I feel? How do I feel about number one? How do I feel about number two? Well, if you're not excited about each one, then get rid of them. Dump them. Because chances are... If you don't feel good about them, guess what? They don't feel good about you, and chances are they could be talking against you behind your back. I mean, make, you don't have to do business with everybody. Do, if, you're, if you're a customer of mine, I will go to bat for you. And if, you're, if I'm not going to go to bat for you, then don't, I don't want you on my customer list. Now, that's a, that's a gutsy move because not everybody's going to do that. Because the dollar bill is more important to you than the relationship. But in fact, if you build better relationships, you'll be making more money in the long run. So, so I don't want prospects you know, and your customers being adversarial. I want you on the same team. We're in this thing together. Let's win together. This is a beauty, becoming distracted. Somewhere along the line, somebody told somebody else 
that the more things, the more balls you keep in the air, the better off you're going to be, the more talented you are, the more skillful you are. It's called multitasking. Call it whatever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I can go to debate with you if you want. I mean, we can, we can bang this one, you know, go up to the bar and get a couple of beers and bang this one around for the next five hours. But multitasking is the quickest way to screw up your life. Okay, you're not, you're not that good. You think you are. You're not. You, you, you juggle two things, you're going to screw two things up. Now, a lot of travel agents say, well, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. We've got to juggle a lot of things. Well, then keep juggling in that. You go ahead. Go ahead. You go do it. And then you come back 10 years from now wondering what happened. You have to focus on people today because focus is the only thing that separates you from the Internet. The Internet can't focus on you. People focus on people. So if you don't focus on me, then you're no different than the Internet. Why? Why? I don't need you. I'm important to me. And if you're not, if you don't treat me important like I'm important to me, then I don't need you. Don't answer the phone when you're talking to me. Okay, or ask my permission to answer the phone. You know, when you're with me, you be with me. When you're with your customers, you be with your customers. None of this multitasking stuff. Now, that's in this day and age, I've probably lost half the people on the phone call. They all went back to work already. But I really believe that. You focus on me, and things are going to happen. But if you don't like me, if I'm a pr customer that you don't like, then, of course, you're not going to focus on me. So you're going to get rid of me so you can focus on the people you want to focus on. I hope that's, I hope that's crystal clear. Because when you look people in the eye, you, I, don't answer the phone. Turn the phone off. Don't do it. I mean, if, you're, if I'm talking right now to you right now, and I hear somebody beep into my line, and I say to you, oh, excuse me, folks, I've got to go see who's on that phone, what does that tell you? It tells you that a dumb bell, the risk, that, the chance that somebody important is on that, is more important than me talking to you. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, I always get a kick out of, I'm, I'm at a counter in a store. I, I have my packages in front of me. My wallet is out. I'm ready to hand you a $20 bill. The phone rings, a bell goes off, and the guy leaves me in my wallet and goes and answers a bell. You know, so, someone will have to explain that to me. Okay. Um, and here's another one. I'll just tell you what, who you're dealing with here. I'll go to a doctor's office, and, and the nurse will look up, and she'll kind of be, she's doing something. She'll look up, she'll, can I help you? And I'll say, no, you can't help me. You're not, you can't help me down there. You've got to come up here and help me. I, I, stop what you're doing. Come on over here, and you can help me. And, and then if you're not ready to help me, then finish what you're doing, and then come over. But at least acknowledge my presence. Give me the, I'll be right there in a minute by showing me your fingers. Or, you know, show, acknowledge my presence, and then finish what you're doing. It's very skillful. I mean, it, it, you see it the wrong way all the time. Not taking notes is a mistake, folks. You, your memory is not that good. There's too much going on. Pause, sit down, get a pencil, get a paper, and say, Mike, bear with me here. i got to document this. When you, I, I'm going to take notes. Very, very important. And people just kind of look at you like they're, re they're not, You're not going to remember what I said. In two minutes, you're going to forget, and you're going to screw things up. Take notes. And, and this one... If you ask any salesman in any company, any industry, in any state, what the biggest shortfall they have, I don't care how much money they make, $700,000 a year, $2 million a year, I don't care, they're going to tell you the biggest shortfall, the, the shortcoming they have is follow through. They're, they're, they're good at starting stuff, and then it, it falls through the cracks. They get on to the next. It's kind of like the, the shiny bauble syndrome that they just keep going from thing to thing. Follow through. Finish what you start. Finish what you start. If you tell me you're going to do something, do it. If you tell me you're going to call me back, call me back. If you tell me you're going to mail something, mail it. But follow through. It, it's, it's a true, true differentiator. If you say to me, why should, I, why should I hire you? Why should I hire you if I'm interviewing you? And you say to me, because if I tell you I'm going to do something, consider it done. Boom. That's all. You can, they, I, I'd hire you. I'll be here on time. I'll look good. And whatever I say, I'm going to do. Period. Bingo. And where, when do I start? Because people don't do that. 
Keep calm and focus. So going back to the focus again, that's the multitask. It's just kind of relax. You can't do everything. You're not going to juggle 55,000 balls. You're not going to do it. It's impossible. You're just going to get stressed out. Keep calm and focus. Stay within yourself and finish the task that you're starting. Now, we're up on 13. I'm going to go back now to Roberta. And Roberta, can you, um, can you uh, let's see, where is it? In the question box? Yeah. Uh, Roberta or uh, let's see, Corrine, can you just write something in the question box saying that we're on a purple slide? That we're to yes or no, we're on number 13, just so I know that we're tracking together here. Uh, nothing's popped in yet. Uh, is it the chat? No, it's the questions. Roberta or Corrine? Um, oh, did I lose you guys? Am I, am I talking to myself here? Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I can see it. Okay, Corinne, on per, uh, well, purple slide. Okay, great. I got to slide down here. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you. Okay, not planning the day. This is I, I, this is one of my problems, I think. I'll just put my heart on my sleeve here is that, that sometimes I'll start a day and I'll say, okay, what am I going to do today? And usually that's it's too late by then because the day will take a, a a a personality of its own. It'll take a root of its own. Before you go to bed the night before, pick one or two things that you that are important to you personally that you want to accomplish the next day. So, you know you don't have to spend hours on this, but before you wrap up on a Monday night, say tomorrow Tuesday I'm going to do A and B. Maybe just A. Just maybe just A. But do your planning a little bit the day before, and you're gonna get you're gonna become a little more effective. Because what happens once a day starts, as you know, it takes on a life of its own. The phone rings, and complaints come in, and people come in, and it just all kinds of things happen. So plan a little bit the night before, and you'll be doing yourself a favor. Not looking your best, and again, we're talking about sales here now. If I asked you right now, let's go out and open up the trunk of your car and let me see what it looks like. Let's go down to the basement right now in your house. Let's go to your basement and let's see what it looks like. Let's go to your uh, the garage and see what it looks like. Okay. Now the point is, is that in many cases it's going to be, hey, Mike, be my guest. Follow me. Here it is. But in many cases you're going to say, uh-oh, uh-oh. I didn't vacuum the potato chips off the front seat of my car. Well, the point there I'm trying to make is that you never know in sales, you never know when someone's going to be looking in your trunk. Okay, You never know if, some, if you're going to be talking to somebody and says, hey, let's go get a cup of coffee. We'll take your car. You never know. And likewise, when you go out for, for uh, groceries or you take a quick rundown, you never know who's going to see you. Now, I'm not suggesting how you dress. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. But I'm saying that first impressions make a difference. They're not lasting. Last impressions are what are lasting. But first impressions make a difference. And how you dress and how you, you take care of yourself, let's put it that way, how you take care of yourself is telling me something. It's telling me something. And now depending on what that something is, I will decide if you were my kind of person or not. So all I'm saying here, I'm being trying to be politically correct, is that you just have to feel comfortable with yourself at all times and get ready to, to take the consequences. Okay, that, I guess that's the best way to say that. It'd be, why? Because... People are visual. They, they see things. They, they don't, you don't have to talk. You don't have to open up your mouth. I can look at you and make a, a decision. I, I go into seminars and I say, how long does it take to make a decision? When you see somebody for the first time, how long does it take you to categorize that person? And they will say to me, well, five minutes, two minutes. Say, two minutes? What do you mean two minutes? Eight milliseconds. I'm going to look at you and I'm going to make a judgment on you. It could be totally false, totally false, but that's the way it's going to happen. I'm going to make a judgment. So, so the, way you, the way you present yourself, just make sure that that's the way you want to do it. That's all. This is key. This is a key point here. 
your customer is your competitor's prospect, your customer, the one that you have is your, your client, your customer, is my prospect. Now that's an important understanding. And here's why. Because as entrepreneurs, as the type of people we are in sales, the hunt is more fun than the win. All right, we 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 have more. We have find more pleasure in trying to get something than we do once we have it. All right, it's just it's it's. Uh, uh, yeah, I can use a lot of examples. One of the examples was like I I, um, uh, I played college football, and and uh, boy, you'd give anything, anything in high school to get a scholarship to go play college football. You'd give anything. And then once you made the team in college, you were hoping that it would rain so you wouldn't have to practice. See, it was getting there, which was fun. Once you're there, it's not so much fun anymore. My dad was a pilot. He would give anything to fly an airplane in the Army. Once he got his wings, he was hoping for fog so he wouldn't have to go do it. See, that, that's, that's the same phenomenon. Once we do anything to get that new client, and once we get them, we spend more time going after the next client, not taking care of what we have. So the reason I tell you that is because your customer is my prospect, which means I'm going to find more energy trying to go get that client of yours than you are trying to keep that client happy. So before you go out and exercise your competitive nature to go find new business, I want you to make certain that your clients are happy with you. And you can only do that by calling them up and refreshing and revitalizing and re-energizing the relationship now. And there's no better time of year to do that than right now, this afternoon. Send an email of thanks. Just say, from my family to yours, I want you to know how much we appreciate doing business with you and we're looking forward to doing it next year. I mean, just appreciate people. Take the time to tell your clients that they're important to you. Now, if you have 7,000 clients, you're not going to do 7,000 of them unless you mean it. But there's, you have 10 or 20 or 30 clients that you'd really be hurt if you lost them. Well, don't lose them by, by, by being stupid. Okay, if you're going to lose them, do it, you know, earn the loss. Don't be because you're, you're lazy. And, and, and the, there's a statistic out that I believe in that says that most people who lose their business, who you know, business comes and business goes, but the reason, the, the, the vast majority of the reason you will lose business is not because you make a mistake, it's because they will feel that you're taking them for granted. That's why. And, 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 and it's true. I mean, any relationship, you get lazy, you get comfortable, and then you get sloppy. Well, don't get sloppy with your business. So nail it down, button it down, and then, then, and only then go out and find some new business. And, and this falls right in line with it. Contact the people who are meaningful to you regularly. You don't have to just do it at Christmas time. It's regularly. And the best time to do it is when they don't expect it. Not their birthday. Not... Uh, Christmas, do it out of the left field. Hit them out of left field. Say, you know, I was just thinking of you today and I realize how important you are to me. Is there anything I can do that I'm not doing? Bingo, that's all. It could be an email. It could be, and, and you know my postcard Friday, my, my, uh, my postcard Friday rule is, is say thank you in a handwritten note every Friday to one person. It will make a huge difference in your life and, and their life too. I sent one out the other day to somebody, and I got back the phrase that I love. And this is the phrase that you want to hear. You made my day. Thanks, Mike. You made my day. Now, it doesn't, can it get better than that? I mean, what, what possibly can people say that's any better than that? Thanks, Mike. You made my day. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. And what did I do to make your day? I said, thank you. I acknowledged them. Hey, which brings me to another point, and that is, only confident people, only the confident people who have, who, who, who have a, a, a calmness about themselves stop long enough to applaud other people. 
and that is to recognize people doing good things. And and I want if if you can get into this habit, folks, man, you, this is life changing. Go to a stranger, go to a young person, and say, you know, I've been watching you. You're really good at what you do. You know that, that a waitress, a waiter, a driver at a hotel. I've been watching you. You're really good at what you do. You know, keep it up, man. We're we're noticing. We're watching out here. Well, for only you're the only one in ten years that ever told them that. And they're going to go home and they're going to tell their family. I mean, it's going to make their day. It's going to make their day. And all you got to do is just acknowledge people, applaud people. Say, boy, you're really good at this. Now, if you see somebody, if you're hiring somebody and you see them, you say, boy, you're really good at this. If you ever think about changing jobs, give me a call because I, I, think, I think we might have something to talk about. I mean, that's how you hire people. You don't, you don't put an ad in the paper saying, I, I, I need somebody. You go out and applaud somebody, and they will run to you. That's how you do it. Okay, um, focus on the little things, folks. Little tiny things. Uh, the, the the women on the phone today. If I if if you and I went out for coffee and I opened up your passenger side door for you to get in the car, you would notice that. You would notice. Of course, you would notice that. Not only would you notice it, you would appreciate it. Not that it's a big deal. You can open up your own car door, but it's a little thing. Little flowers, little notes, little little things make a big, huge difference today because nobody finds the time or makes the time to do things. We know what they, we know what we should do. We don't do it. So when you do something, my my brother was was telling me the other day. He he sent a graduate. No, he sent a wedding gift or a graduation. He sent something to somebody. He doesn't need a thank you note. Who can, I'm going to live a lot. I don't need your thank you note. But he was saying, you know, it's been eight months. I've never received a thank you note. Not that it's, you know, it, it just, it, it's a little thing. It's important for you to say thank you to people. Thank you to your customers. Thank you to your prospects. Thank you to your preferred suppliers. Thank you to the, the, the maid who makes your bed in a hotel. Say thank you. I mean, nobody does it. That's all. It's just simple stuff. And then do what you say you're going to do. Don't fluff me. I'm too smart for that. You, 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 you hype me once. You're done. I may use you for a long time, but that's what you're going to be. You're going to be used. If I can use you after you screw up, I'll do it. I'm not above that. I mean, if, you, if you're in a position that can help me, I might use you. But you, be honest with people. And you don't, you'll only get one mistake there. If you say it, do it. If you're not going to do it, don't say it. If you can't do it, don't say it. But honesty is, I mean, that's a... A very, very powerful differentiator today. If I tell you, if I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, and then the niche. You've heard about this. You know, this is a this in our travel industry. This is almost uh, bizarre because you can do a lot of things. You can do honeymoons. You can do Disney. You can do river cruises. You can do ocean cruises. You can do Alaska and tours and Cancuns. In Asia, you can do it all for singles and and gays and marrieds and I mean you can you can do it all, but but by doing it all, you're hurting yourself. And I'd much rather you say, what do I really like? What what really what do I like to do? And focus on that like, and then. That's your niche. That's who you do it for. You become good at it. You become the best at it. And then, can you drift off that niche? Of course you can. Of course you can drift off the niche. You can drift off your specialty. And if you don't know, a niche is just a, a, a target, a specialty. It's like, it's like single travelers. That's a niche. It's like corporate travel. So small corporate travel, that's a niche, okay? Left-handed baseball players, that's a niche. That's a small one, but that's a niche. But, but you can drift away from it. But you, but you want to focus on it because you want to get really good at it. You want to really know your business. And, and, and here's, here's a point, sales professionals out there. I say this all the time, that, that you, know, you don't own a ship. You don't own a tour operator. You don't own a car. You don't own an airplane. You don't own anything. So, so what is it you do? You, know, you, you help me make better decisions. But who do you help? You don't help a plane. You help people. So if you stop to think about it, 
you are in the people business. That's your business, the people business. So if that's true, what book are you reading right now that has to do with people or psychology? See, then think about that. If you're going to be the best in the business and people is your game, then shouldn't it? Shouldn't you be reading about people? I mean, I'm always, I've been in the business 45 years. I'm, I'm always reading about sales and marketing and customer service. I'm always, more than one book, like three at a time. And then I read the book, same books over and over and over again. I mean, I, I don't read them once. I read them three or four times because that's the business. So uh, uh, there's a challenge out there. If you're really serious about getting really good, and I would think you are because you wouldn't be in the inner circle if you weren't. I mean, the people who don't care, and they're, they're just flailing away out there, is that what book are you reading that's not a romance novel? Not that you can't read a romance novel. I want you to read a romance novel. But during your vacation, during your downtime, during your exercise time. Otherwise, I want you to read a business book. And, and there's an old saying, and I guess it's true. I don't know who, who said this first, but that a year from now, you'll be the same person you are today if not for the books you read and the people you hang out with. The people, your, your peer groups are going to help you grow and, the, and your reading is going to help you grow. And then, of course, the experiences. You know, by, you're going to grow through experiences as well. But think about that. And I challenge you to go out and, and, and stop by a uh, you can go to a Kindle or whatever you want. And just get something that's going to stretch your thinking a little bit to understand your game a little bit better. And your game is, is kind of people. Note Card Friday, there it is there. For the folks who are new to the game, I want you to take time out of your busy schedule once a week. That's not asking too much. Once a week to write a handwritten note of thanks, of acknowledgement to somebody in your world. I don't care if it's business or otherwise, but somebody in your world that will that uh, that has affected you that has helped you get to where you are today just to stop once a week one handwritten note and what's going to happen is you're going to feel so good doing that you're going to do it twice a week you're going to end up doing it on Tuesdays you're going to end up doing it a lot of times and it could very well be your only marketing strategy you're going to get up in the morning and write 15 sincere notes and then you're going to take the rest of the day off and you're going to be fine. Mark my words, it's that powerful. Note card Friday. I mentioned earlier, I alluded to the fact that there's a lot of people doing a lot of what you do, and the reason being is because you don't have to buy anything. If you had to buy a ship, there wouldn't be as many of you out there. But there's no buy into this. Okay, It's just a decision on your part that you want to represent the travel industry. It's easy entry. That's the point. And because it's easy entry, there's a lot of you. So we still have to decide, okay, there's 50,000 of us out there. Why should anybody book their travel with me? Why me? I mean, it's, it's, it's choices are there's a zillion choices. And they can go direct, and they can go on the Internet. There's so many ways they can do what I do. Why should they do it with me? Well, that is a good question. So that's a solid, good question that deserves an answer. And here's how you answer it. When somebody says that, because if they don't say it, they're still thinking it. Why should I do business with you? Well, here's, I, I'm, I'm going to give you the first part of the answer that I want you to memorize and, and say verbatim. And here it is. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked me that. that so why should I do business with you? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked me that. That's what I want you to say. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked me that. Now, you, you, you say that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it'll buy you time to get your mind in the right spot because you weren't ready for the question. Okay? So you're buying yourself some thinking time. I'm glad you asked me that. That's a great question. Now, the reason why, if you tell me why you think, if I asked you right now, write it down in front of you, why should I do business with you? And you're going to write down on the, the yellow pad, because I give good service, I've been in the business 25 years, I care about you, uh, nobody does it better than me. I don't know what you're going to say, but you're going to come up with some lame answer to that question. Why should I do business with you? And 
because you said it, of course I believe it's biased. I mean, of course you're going to say good things about you. If you say lousy things about you, that's crazy. You're not going to do that. So you're going to say some flattering things. Of, of you're going to wing it is what you're going to do. And I'm going to nod and smile and discount it because it came from you. So here's the answer. That's a great question. I'm glad you asked me that. And you're going to look at me. And if I'm a small businessman, because I can identify with small businessmen, because that's who I am, you say, the last three small business companies who chose us to handle their company's business chose us because. The last three honeymooners who were interviewing travel agents chose us because. The last four couples who wanted to go on a river cruise chose us because. See, you're, you're telling me why other people that I can identify with chose you. So you're not telling me how good you think you are. You're telling me why other people are satisfied with what you do. Now, I, I, I hope that's clear. You kind of put a third party testimonial in place. I just got back from a Danube River cruise and I told some agents yesterday on the phone, you might have been on the open mic, I said, hey, if you have anybody in the fence, have them call me. Have them call me. I'll sell it. I'll, I, I'm not ashamed. I'll, I'll tell them. I'll, I'll book it for you. I can sell it. Third party people can sell things without apology. So the same thing, you're doing the same thing with your, with your why you is you're, you're bringing a third party in to sell you. You see, the, you see the, the, the little tactic there, the little technique? Not what I think, what they think. And if you can identify with them, then chances are we're going to move one step closer. Your biggest worry as a small business person, entrepreneur, lucky you, lucky me, that's who we are, your biggest worry, problem, snag, concern, or issue. It's all the same. The answer is all the same. But I'm going to tell you what your biggest problem is, your biggest snag, your biggest concern, your biggest issue, and what you should be worried about. I'm going to tell you right now. But before I do, I'm going to flip over, and I'm going to ask Corrine or uh, Roberta to give me a heads up. Give me a 22. Give me a 22 to make sure we're moving in the right direction. Twenty-two, Roberta. I can see it. Binoculars. Okay. Is it? I'm going to say Corrine. I hope it's Corrine, or maybe Corinne. But I'm going to say Corrine. In any event, here's your biggest problem. Your biggest problem, concern, issue, or concern. Here we go. Is that not enough people know that you exist? They don't know you're alive. You're not visible enough. I can't possibly decide if I'm going to do business with you or not do business with you. I can't make that decision if I don't know you. Once I know you, then I can make that decision. Some will say yes, some will say no, but at least there's a decision. But until I know you're alive, that will not happen. So the strategy as you get up next Monday morning isn't to sell anything. It's to go out and make the right people know you're alive. That's it. That's your strategy because that's easy. I'm going to be, I'm going to get visible. I'm going to go to trade shows. I'm going to write letters. I'm going to send emails. Today, and I'm not going to challenge you on the phone today, but today I wrote, I think, 32 emails from 7 o'clock this morning to people on my email list. And I said, under the guise of, of Merry Christmas, okay, I used that today to say thank you. Now let me tell you how I did it. I went to the bottom, I went over to my email box, my inbox, and I, no, I went to my sent box, my sent box, and I scrolled down to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, to the, and it went down through, I think, April. I'm not very good at these things, but it's April. Then from the bottom of my sent box, I started scrolling up. And every time I saw somebody, it kind of like, oh, man, I haven't talked to him in a long time. And I sent him an email. Then I scrolled up and I sent another email. And I did that 32 times from my sent box moving up. Now, once you finish that exercise, you can go to your you can go to your inbox, go to the bottom, and come up. And chances are, it's been six months since you've spoken to some of these people, and it just gives you a reason to get back in touch with them. And and remember this: when you're out of sight, you're out of mind. 
out of sight, out of mind. They're not going to be looking for you. You've got to get into their sight. So you do that with seminars, workshops, webinars, sales letters, emails, postcards, invitations, cruise nights, trade shows. I mean, it goes on and on. You want to be visible. You're in the game. I'm here to help people. Let's talk. I mean, that's how it works. And it's a great exercise. Go to the bottom of your inner out box and come up. And you, holy cow, I haven't talked to that guy in six months. He likes you. You like him. But it kind of just drifted away. There you go. You're, you're going back in the game. And I'm, I'm trust, do it. And you're going to get some really cool emails back in your email box. I'll tell you why. Because the more emails you send, the more emails you'll receive. The more letters you send, the more letters you'll receive. The more telephone dial outs, the more phone time, the more bells will ring coming in. You have got to make it happen. You've got to be the initiator. And 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 trust me, nobody's going to call the cops on you. No one's going to arrest you. No one's going to do anything negative to you. That's just the way it works. Quick point on email. The salutation. I want you. This is a tough one. Never, ever, 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 that's a lot of evers, never, ever send an email without the first word in your email being the recipient's first name. If you're going to write an email to me, the first thing on that piece of paper I should read is Mike. Try it with my name. Try it without my name. It is, an, it is two entirely different communications. Open up every email with the person's name, and they will read it in a positive nature versus kind of like yelling at me. Now, you test it, you do it, you don't do it. I'm telling you, every single email, start with the person's name. After you write it and the person's name's not there, go back up and fill it in as the last thing you do before you hit the send button. Number two on email, the subject line is what's being eliminated or deleted. That's the headline. So work on your subject lines. Make them snazzy because that's what I'm looking at to either delete it or open it. The subject box is the important box on sending emails, so work on that. The percent sign, I know I'm run, over running my hour here, the percent sign is this, 50% of salespeople quit after the first try. 50% of sales professionals, quote, not professionals, wannabes, they quit after they try something once. 25% quit after they try something twice. So 50% quit after one try, 25% quit after two tries, and here's the number, 80% of sales happen after the fifth try. Yesterday, I had a woman join the inner circle who said, Mike, I got 10 emails, and I finally said, okay. 10, 10 all right? That was not five. That was 10. 80% of sales happen after the fifth contact. So I'm, what I'm telling you, don't quit until they say, I'm going to call the cops, or until they wave a gun in your face. Don't quit. You're not here to hurt me. You're not here to fleece me. You're not here to steal from me. You're here to help me. And I'm not going to let you help me until I'm ready for that help. But that day will come. You have to be visible. You have to be in my universe. So that's what the percentages are for. This is going to be the last slide here. That's a, that's a group of fifth graders, folks. Uh, my last story for today. Uh, get, you, gotta, you guys got to get back to work. Um, last story, that's a group of fifth graders. And a story I've been telling for a long time is that a, a man's first girlfriend, a guy, I can only speak about me, it happens when we're 10 years old and we're in the fifth grade. And what happens, we're minding our own business, playing ball or something at gym, and our boyfriend comes over to us and says, hey, Mikey, I have news for you. I go, what's that? He says, Susie likes you. And with that, with that, I immediately like Susie. I don't know who she is. I don't know what she looks like. I don't know where she is. I don't know nothing about her. But because Susie likes me, I like Susie. And that is how a man gets his first girlfriend. We don't choose them. They choose us. And we say, okay. Well, in a live seminar, I play with this a little bit and get some giggles out of it. But what happens, the same thing holds true when you're 63 years old. If you like me, I like you. If you don't like me, I don't like you. 
I don't. I have no reason. You don't like me. I don't like you. Period. That's the end of the story. You like me. I like you. So in sales, in business, in life, become likable. Become more likable. Get people to like you, and it'll work both ways. People do business with people they like. So become more likable. Listen more. Ask more questions. Pay attention. Be honest. Do what you say. Be likable. Be prompt. Be on time. Write thank you notes. Be likable. And then your life is going to unfold because it happens when you were 10. It happens when you're 60. People do business with people they like. So be likable. So I'm going to end on that one. I don't know if this is another one here. Uh, we won't do that one, Mary. We'll end on this one, the fifth grader. But uh, that's that's what I wanted to share with you today, the newbies and the and the and the old professionals and the and the guys who've been in the trenches a long time. It's not rocket science, folks. You don't have to learn scripts and overcome objections and sell up and do all these fancy things. You have to be you. You have to go find those Easter eggs. Find the people who are receptive to your help, who are receptive to your communications, who are receptive to your, your friendship and your relationship and your interest in them, your genuine interest in them. Go find those people and help them and then really help them so they'll say, holy cow, this person is, what, this, this is a wow, this is wow. And then they will then hopefully pass it on through their world and you'll get referrals from it. But there's no magic pill here. It's three steps. Target your audience, select your weapons of contact, and then go do something regularly, every single day, moving in that right direction, looking at the horizon, not chasing the nose, but saying, I'm going to go do that. I'm going to get there. Here's how I'm going to do it. Watch me. And that's how you do it. So that was today's Sales 101. Um, if it was helpful, let me me know we'll probably do it again maybe a 102 or whatever it is but let me know uh, if you enjoyed today's program otherwise get back to work this will be recorded it'll be up as soon as I can get it up thanks for taking an hour of your time today now here's the 12 word marketing plan get up get out and make more people glad they know you that's the secret 12 words going into 2013 this is Mike I'll talk to you later thanks for coming in today bye